Hello, it is Throwback Thursday, April 13th, 2023. Steve Cypress here, and we are throwing it all the way back to the year 1865, because it was on tomorrow's date, April 14th in 1865, that John Wilkes Booth assassinated Abraham Lincoln, the first presidential assassination, unfortunately not the last, in U.S. history. And so what does this mean for business owners? Well, two things, both around misinformation or manipulation or the use of statistics or the use of meaningless or inconsequential things drummed up to be extremely meaningful. These are important because perhaps, hopefully not, but perhaps you're called on to promote something that is subpar. Now, hopefully in your own business, you have an excellent product or service. So just in case you're having problems or you are promoting something that's not necessarily great, uh, it's up to you to find a statistic, to find something that you can somehow twist to point into your favor. And on the other hand, you want to be real good at this. You can recognize when you're being scammed, when you're being misled and manipulated. Uh, so I'll give you some examples of uh, meaningless statistics. Well, uh, back uh, a few years ago in the summer here in the U.S., uh, almost every night we had rioters in cities all over the country burning and looting and rioting and destroying cities across America. And yet you had at least one news outlet famously calling them, well, mostly peaceful protests. Now, technically, see, that was true. Uh, now, if you, and if you really uh, hated America and wanted to see things destroyed, which many people do, uh, then you wanted to celebrate these riots and this burning down of all kinds of small businesses and uh, attacking of government buildings and just general disarray and uh, craziness going on and destruction all throughout the country. So you wanted to paint them in a positive light. So you, you would focus on the fact that these protests, these marches, uh, they took place pretty much all day. And then when nighttime fell for two, three hours, out would come the, uh, you know, all clad in black uh, Marxist uh, Antifas and BLM and all those uh, radicals uh, out to destroy America and they would come out and the burning and rioting and looting would start and ensue. So basically you had three hours, four hours maybe of the violent protesting and rioting and five or six hours, at least more than half of the peaceful protesting. And therefore they were mostly peaceful protests. See how that works? Uh, and I bring that up because John Wilkes Booth is my favorite example of that kind of manipulative statement because you could say that John Wilkes Booth was a mostly peaceful person. See, he's well known for being a murderer, for being an assassin, and yet he lived to uh, very nearly 27 years old. And uh, quickly, I took out my calculator before I, I came on to uh, record this, and that added up to nearly 10,000 days of life. So in nearly 10,000 days of life, John Wilkes Booth was violent only one of those days and only a very little part of one of those days, maybe only one minute of one of those days when he actually took aim, took the shot into the back of the head of the President of the United States and then leapt onto the stage and yelled, uh, six semper tyrannis and, you know, that was violent there for maybe a minute and then he, he ran off and, uh, and ran away. So very little violence, mostly, therefore, peaceful, a mostly peaceful person, John Wilkes Booth. Now, would anyone really describe an assassin, a murderer, as a mostly peaceful purpose just because by the preponderance of the time of his life, most of his time on earth was peaceful? I mean, and that goes for Jack the Ripper and, and Son of Sam and any serial killer, even if they murdered 50 people. They still were, by math, uh, the amount of time that they spent not killing people, way overwhelmed the small amount of time they spent killing people. So mostly peaceful? Is that an honest way of describing them? 
with statistics, yes, in the same way saying a mostly peaceful protest that was burning down cities all across America was honest in one little way. Uh, in sports, uh, famous uh, New York Yankees fans, uh, 1960, the New York Yankees absolutely destroyed the Pittsburgh Pirates. They outscored them more than double over the seven-game series. However, that is a meaningless statistic because the World Series did not consist of we figure out the winner based on who scored the most runs over the total of the seven games. Those are seven separate games. And the four really close games, the Pirates won, and three big blowouts, the Yankees won. However, the Pirates won more of the games. Pirates became the world champions, and even though the Yankees pretty much destroyed them in every statistical category over the seven days, they did not win. Similarly, uh, political uh, uh, presidential, let's say U.S. presidential candidates who lose, love to cite the also meaningless statistic, well, uh, my candidate won the popular vote. Well, there's again, just like there's no such thing as the cumulative score, of a seven game World Series, the seven separate games is all that matters. There's no such thing as the popular vote for President of the United States. There are 51 or however many separate elections and each weighted differently based on the population of each different state. So really all that matters is not the overall votes. If you add them up in 51 separate elections, that doesn't matter. All that matters is what's called the electoral college and how much, how many of those weighted electoral votes in each one of those different states all add up to matter. So you see this manipulation going on, well, but our candidate won the popular vote, or the New York Yankees destroyed the Pirates in 1960, or those riots were mostly peaceful, or John Wilkes Booth. Here on Throwback Thursday, we remember tomorrow the anniversary of the assassination of Abe Lincoln. That was only one minute out of his 27, nearly 27 year life. He was a mostly peaceful person. How come everybody is talking bad about John Wilkes Booth? That was a mostly peaceful purpose. So you see this manipulation, persuasion, uh, influence, selling, whatever you want to call it, this game is one that is a high stakes game. And if you really want to play to the top level, you want to get really good at using persuasive, uh, uh, influential, language when you are advertising, marketing, and selling your product or service. And also the second lesson is you want to get real good at recognizing it. Another one is this whole uh, climate thing. Like, oh, the last hundred years or the last 10 years, we've had record highs. The temperatures are rising. If this continues, and, ooh, uh, and yet they ignore, <laughs> of course, just, uh, oh, how conveniently ignore the all time history of the earth's temperature where we're nowhere near the hottest temperature even the last few thousand years. So of course, and obviously, since there were hotter, hotter times thousands of years ago, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that, that cars and, uh, and factories and airplanes had nothing to do with it. And so, but we, so therefore we don't want to quote the all time historical temperature of the earth and say like, hey, you know, we're in a rising period, and then of course it falls. I mean, that's the history of the earth, the rising and falling. No, we don't want to do that. We want to cite a, a skewed statistic, like the last 150 years or the last 20 years or something meaningless like that to make our point and try and steal people's money and uh, give it to donors who are uh, in the business of uh, destroying the, uh, basically the way of life and the quality of life of people by telling them you can't drive cars, you can't fly planes, you can't eat what you want, you can't live where you want, you can't do what you want uh, in the name of saving the earth. So you see how it works. You wanna be able to spot the scams, the manipulation, and you wanna be able to use uh, skewed statistics if necessary, and hopefully they're not in your business. Like I said, I hope you have an excellent product or service uh, when I take on a client at this point in my, my career, I insist they have an excellent product or service. I have no interest in helping to advertise or market or sell a subpar uh, product or service that needs this kind of uh, manipulation, persuasion, jumping through hoops uh, to uh, make a point. 
Uh, but I did back in the day. I've studied it for decades. I can do it. I can certainly spot it being done. I just choose not to do it in my business or for my clients. I choose rather to just have to state the facts. But if you do have to persuade, there's a little lesson in how it's done with some historical and current day examples. And that'll do it for Throwback Thursday, April 13th, 2023. I was thinking the 14th because that's what I was talking about here. The, the anniversary of the assassination of Lincoln on the 14th in 1865. Thanks for being here today. And I'll be back again tomorrow on Foundation Friday. Until then, over and out. Bye-bye.